Hello, I'm Brenda Sosa, and I am the blogger at Art Teacher 101 Blogspot. Today I'm going to show you how I facilitate the scribble line creativity stretcher in my classroom. Just to give you some information about my classroom, I teach a kindergarten, first, and second grade class for 30 minutes at a time. And I have four sections of kindergarten, four sections of first grade, and four sections of second grade. And I see them for 30 minutes about every other day they alternate. So two sections of kindergarten I see for 30 minutes and then the other two sections of kindergarten I will see the following day and then they rotate every other day. Now this activity, this creativity stretcher that I call scribble line drawing or automatism isn't just something that I do at the elementary classroom. When I taught high school art and even in some of my adult classes I've done this activity and it really is very effective for improving creativity, opening up the mind. Um, as a warm-up activity, it's really great for flexible thinking. So there's lots of ways to use this activity, not just necessarily in the art room, but for any activity that requires some warm-up to thinking or brainstorming this is a great activity to do. And I call it, again, my scribble line creativity stretcher or automotism as it's also called. You can also find this on my website, this activity, and many examples, too, of some of the drawings that the students have created in my classroom. So to begin, the first thing I do is I tell my students that we're going to do a creativity stretcher. And I relate it to a rubber band. And just like a rubber band that stretches, I say sometimes we need to stretch our brains so that we are more creative, more imaginative, and even better flexible thinkers. So the first thing we do is we put on our creativity hats. And I give the students a piece of paper. And I say, we're going to do a time scribble. So when Mrs. Sosa says, ready, set, go, everyone as a whole class will begin scribbling for one minute. And then I explain to students, what I want to see is not any planned, meditative, organized drawing. I don't want anything methodical. What I want is more random, free-flowing, spontaneous drawing scribble lines. And so what they do is they fill their lines with various scribbles, zigzags, spirals, curly cues, and if you do this enough times, the pencils start to wear down, so you probably need to sharpen them between classes. But what I do is I just have them fill their entire paper. If I see some students moving slow, I will encourage them to move faster because then they're planning too much. I have the students scribble on their paper until I start counting down. Three, two, one, stop. And then everyone in the class stops scribbling. So I tell kids that that's the easy part. I also tell them that during this time, they should have been thinking like toddlers. That same scribbling mentality of just free-flowing lines, not concerned with the final outcome. They're preschoolers. Scribbling with a pencil. And they love that because not very often are they allowed that freedom to create such randomness. So I tell them the next step is a little bit more difficult and challenging because now what students need to do is they need to use their imagination, use the visual side of their brain, and start looking for images within their scribbles. So their original image must come from scribble lines. And I say it can be anything, imaginary, real, 
The only thing I say they can't create are letters and numbers. And if they find letters or numbers, that's fine. But then they need to use their imagination and turn those letters or numbers into something representational. Even something as simple as a monster or an imaginary creature of some sort, as long as it looks like something. I also say that they cannot erase. Now, obviously, it's difficult to see any images at first. So if it's their first time doing this activity, they might find it difficult. So what I encourage them to do is they can turn their paper and see if something pops out in that direction, or even turn it again and see if something becomes visible. I even, this, this somewhat reminds me of in the comics in the newspaper where you have those hidden pictures where it's just a repetitive image that's repeated over and over again. But if you hold it close to your face and then pull it away, uh, an image pops out from within that pattern of repeated pictures. It kind of reminds me of that. And so what I'm doing is I'm just looking and then I kind of demonstrate how I use the scribble lines to find, my, oh, so I see something. I see this scribble line right here to me looks like an eye. And so does this one. And all I'm doing is tracing right on top of the scribble line with a permanent marker. And then this is the top of a head. And then I see this, let's see, I see, well, I see a bunch of lines that could be the bottom of a chin. I like this one the best. And all I'm doing again is tracing on top. So here I have the basic structure of a head. And then I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm just using the scribble lines that are there. Okay. And then, oh, I might be able to use some of the scribble lines for some details. And then as I'm going along, I just ask them, do you see the same thing I'm seeing? And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. And so I say, here's the tricky part. Sometimes we can see these things, and sometimes we can't. So in order to help my neighbor see the same thing I see, I add details. So I might add some eyeballs, so you see that as an eye, and maybe some eyelashes. And I don't have a mouth yet, but you know what? I see... I see that this line that's already in the scribbles might make a very good chin. And then, since I'm already making it kind of girly, I might just add some lips. Now, this is going to be a very abstract image when they are done. Maybe realistic, but all I'm doing is I'm just looking for things that might be real life. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I see some legs for this creature. Obviously, this is an imaginary creature that doesn't really exist. I really like how that becomes a leg. And this becomes the tail end. And all I'm doing is tracing right on top of the scribble lines. Now I say, this may not look like feet to you, but what if I added some toes? Some other additional details that would help you see what I see. And then I'm going to add a tail. I think this scribble line makes a great tail for my imaginary creature. And on my blog, on my website, I discuss how automatism was actually started by the surrealist. 
So a lot of these images that we create from these scribble line drawings remind me a lot of a Juan Miro painting, the surrealist artist from Spain. Um, if you look up some of his images, like Nocturne, that being one of them, uh, really look like these characters that we find in these scribble lines. So then I say, well, I have all this open space. What else can I see? And then I would encourage the child, the student, to find other things that might be hiding inside those scribble lines. It doesn't necessarily have to be a creature. I know that many students might see something like this. And this looks like an eyeball. And maybe they could create that eye and then maybe they see some of these scribble lines as eyelashes and then adding more. Okay. Once they're done finding their images and tracing them with the permanent marker then I have them go ahead and add color with, depending on the age group, crayons, colored pencils, or I've even done this in paint, where we instead trace with permanent marker, we trace with black oil pastel, and then use tempera or watercolor paint to fill in the color in between. And then that also eliminates the scribble lines within our objects and makes the creature or the image that we found stand out even more. So here you have it. This is our creativity stretcher. I call it the scribble line drawing. When the kids hear that we are doing this activity, they get very excited. They especially love the idea of being able to scribble on their paper and make a mess. And it's just, it's just freeing for them, I believe. So if you have any questions or suggestions even, please go to the comment section of this video and let me know what you think.